Please excuse a short advertisement before I proceed. I am offering an audio course in conservation biology. Details are found at the link in the description immediately beneath this video. As usual, links to the other articles I mentioned in this video are included in the attendant blog post at GuyMcPherson.com. From my email inbox comes this message, and thousands of similar messages from people incapable of understanding the process of science, as well as the attendant language. Quote, is this real? Have you seen scientific papers from other parts of the world showing the same thing? Plankton are the foundation of ocean life. The news is vindicating you, not the corporate whores at the IPCC. I wished you were wrong because I don't want to face extinction so soon. But I fear you may be spot on, five years or less. I keep hoping for a Hail Mary like aliens showing up and fixing our planet for us, since we certainly won't do it. End quote. The message concluded with a link to a paper in the Sunday Post in Scotland. I've included that link in the blog post at GuyMcPherson.com, coincident with the release of this video. My response to the email message, quote, This is real. By quoting peer-reviewed papers on the scholars who produce them, I'm correct. Conservative, but correct. Thus, the defamation campaign that has destroyed my public life, end quote. Yes, that's a cryptic response. No, I don't have time to answer every question in detail 15 times after I answered it the first time. I don't take the time to point out the confused ignorance certain to result among the masses as habitat for human animals continues to disappear from this beautiful planet. To many anonymous trolls on YouTube, my cryptic responses suggest I'm an unreliable crank. I have two words for such anonymous trolls. The first one starts with an F and rhymes with tuck. The second word starts with a Y and is yourself. In a society dominated by ignorant optimists who don't understand the process of science, there are many surprises ahead. This need not be the case, as I pointed out before. However, I'm certain it will be the case because societal inertia is so strong. I addressed this specific issue years ago, of course. Consider, for example, the climate change summary posted at GuyMcPherson.com and last updated August 2nd, 2016. Long before that date, I added this information to self-reinforcing feedback loop number 23. Quote, Plankton formed the base of the marine food web. Some populations have declined 40% since 1950. And then parenthetically, I add, for example, see the article in the 29 July 2010 issue of Nature. And they are on the verge of disappearing completely, according to a paper in the 18 October 2013 issue of Global Change Biology, end quote. So in this case, the email message sent to me last week had been answered by me eight and a half years ago, for free. For those of you who are actually interested in the science of abrupt irreversible climate change, please take a look at my extensive body of work at GuyMcPherson.com before you contribute unnecessarily to my busy life. Did I mention it's free? Back to the paper in the Sunday Post, which is titled, Our Empty Oceans, Scott's Team's Research Finds Atlantic Plankton All But Wiped Out in Catastrophic Loss of Life. Here's the lead. Quote, Scientists have discovered a catastrophic loss of life in our oceans we can reveal. End quote. The following 21 words tell the whole story. Quote, An Edinburgh-based research team fears plankton, the tiny organisms that sustain life in our seas, has all but been wiped out. End quote. If you're a rare individual actually paying attention to my freely available work, then you know that the loss of plankton has been reported for several years. In addition, you will not be surprised that we reached the point that scientists have been warning us about quite a while ago. The third paragraph of this story in the Sunday Times provides a stunningly comprehensive explanation. Quote, the scientists warn there are only a few years left before the consequences become catastrophically clear when fish, whales, and dolphins become extinct with grave implications for the planet. In the report, the researchers from the Global Oceanic Environmental Survey Foundation goes, state, an environmental catastrophe is unfolding. We believe humanity could adapt to global warming and extreme weather changes. It is our view that humanity will not survive the extinction of most marine plants and animals. End quote. Well, duh. Not, on, not only will so humanity not survive the extinction of most marine plants and animals, otherwise known as a dead ocean, but humanity also will not survive the rapid environmental change resulting from the ongoing mass extinction event. As I pointed out repeatedly in this space, we do not have decades ahead of us. We have only until shortly after we run out of habitat for human animals. 
I join other scientists in being surprised we made it this long with habitat on Earth for our species, most notably resulting from ice still floating on the Arctic Ocean and also passing the global peak of oil extraction more than 17 years ago. We have not yet experienced an ice-free Arctic Ocean, despite projections to the contrary. We have not yet experienced the uncontrolled meltdown of enough of the world's nuclear facilities to remove habitat for human animals. Such an event will lead to stripping away of stratospheric ozone. We have not yet experienced the fate faced by many other vertebrates and mammals. We have only experienced wet bulb temperatures sufficient to cause organ failure in humans beyond tropical and subtropical regions relatively recently. In fact, that began happening on July 7, 2022, and it's happening right now throughout much of Europe, coming soon to North America if it hasn't arrived by the time I release this video. Our stunningly good fortune aside, so far, we do not have until 2050, contrary to the idiocy sent my way every day. Believing paid climate scientists, politicians, and media personalities is a prescription for unpleasant surprises in the near future. Here's what team leader Howard Dryden said to the interviewer at the Sunday Post, quote, Based on our observations, plankton numbers have already crashed and are now at the levels that I predicted would not happen for another quarter of a century, end quote. This is the response I've come to expect from virtually all humans. Catastrophic events are occurring faster than expected. Dryden goes on, quote, Given that plankton is the life support system for the planet and humanity cannot survive without it, the result is disturbing. Our results confirmed a 90% reduction in primary productivity in the Atlantic. Effectively, the Atlantic Ocean is now pretty much dead. We surveyed the Caribbean from St. Lucia to Grenada. Now the only fish available in restaurants there is imported farmed Atlantic salmon. It had been reported that 50% of the coral was gone. Our observations were that the coral is 100% gone in many locations and 90% gone in all locations." End quote. The story in the Sunday Post includes a link to SSRN, a preprint and early research platform hosted by the renowned Elsevier series of journals. Posting a preprint, as Howard Dryden and his colleague Diane Duncan have done, allows authors to share their research quickly and widely ahead of peer review and publication. In this case, the preprint served as the basis for the story published in the Sunday Post. A link to the preprint is included in the blog post at GuyMcPherson.com, coincident with the release of this video. Near the bottom of page 5 in the 8-page preprint at SSRN comes this line, quote, Perhaps over a time frame of just one or two years, we lose all the whales, seal, birds, teleost fish, and the food supply for two billion people. End quote. If more evidence is needed, here's a headline from Yahoo News on July 18, 2022. Worst case weather prediction for 2050 is coming true this week in Britain. The second paragraph reads, quote, in the summer of 2020, the Met Office created imagined weather forecasts for the year 2050 based on climate projections, and they look eerily similar to this week's UK heat wave. End quote. Climate scientist Dr. Simon Lee of Columbia University wrote on Twitter, quote, In 2020, the Met Office produced a hypothetical weather forecast for 23 July 2050 based on UK climate projections. Today, the forecast for Tuesday is shockingly almost identical for large parts of the country." End quote. Shocking? Really? I don't know if paid climate scientists are required to be ignorant or if it's a decision made they make on their own. In more recent news, here's a headline from The Guardian in the UK on July 20th, 2022. Alarm as fastest growing US cities risk becoming unlivable from climate crisis. The subhead reads, some of the cities enjoying population boom are among those gripped by a ferocious heat wave and seeing record temperatures. Here's the lead, quote, the ferocious heat wave that is gripping much of the U.S. South and West has highlighted an uncomfortable, ominous trend. People are continuing to flock to the cities that risk becoming unlivable due to the climate crisis, end quote. The story quotes experts on climate adaptation and urban planning from Tulane University and Arizona State University, respectively. In the first case, Jesse Keenan says, quote, there's been this tremendous amount of growth and it's come with a cost. The deregulation is really catching up with communities and they are paying that price today. We are seeing places run out of water. We've reached a crunch point. 
we are seeing the limits to growth and housing affordability and the impacts of poor quality decision making of where and how to build. We are paying the price for all that now. End quote. Imagine that. Only 50 years after publication of Limits to Growth, it has become clear that we have reached limits to growth. As expected. As predicted. Sarah Mirau, an expert in urban planning at Arizona State University, piles on with this information. Quote, the extreme heat that cities are experiencing now is caused by a combination of climate change and the urban heat island effect. Rapid urban expansion, which means more impervious surfaces like roads and buildings and waste heat from cars and buildings, typically exacerbates the urban heat island effect, which means these cities are even hotter." End quote. As inconvenient as all this sounds, there is no mention of the loss of aerosol masking, certain to follow the reduced industrial activity attendant to the rapid starvation of the two billion people mentioned in the SSR in preprint. In addition, there is no mention of ionizing radiation that will be released from the uncontrolled meltdown of nuclear facilities, and most importantly, the subsequent stripping away of stratospheric ozone. Such an event will cause rapid overheating of Earth, not a so-called nuclear winter, as I've reported previously in this space, apparently strictly for my own edification. Please like, subscribe, and share this video. Click the bell when you subscribe so you'll be notified about future videos. Become a member of this channel for, channel for additional perks at as little as 99 cents per month. Mostly, though, thanks for watching.